What I want to talk about now is breaking raw ground. So here's some raw ground. And there's a variety of different scenarios that this could play out. In my book, I think I read about three different scenarios. And you can use either the rotary plow, which is this, or the tiller. The, the, the thing with the rotary plow, and you'll see it because we'll demo it, it moves a lot of dirt, and it moves dirt from one side to the other, whereas the tiller just tills. I have found that, I think generally that I, I, I prefer the tiller. I've, I've broken up a lot of new raw ground, and I prefer the tiller because it keeps it in place. The rotary plow requires some amount of technique, and the way you, the way you run it on the ground is very important because it only pushes dirt from one side to the other. So you have to have a pattern in the way you do it. So one thing that's important to know or understand for context is if you're in like Arizona or Nevada or Southern California, probably parts of Texas and New Mexico too, soils are similar and they're pretty hard. So if you were, if you were gonna do a, if you were gonna make a farm this size and you were down to raw ground, I wouldn't do it with a BCS. I would just got, hire a person with a tractor to come in and break the ground. It'll just save you killing yourself because this is hard work. <laughs> so, you know, get somebody to come in with a subsoiler or a cultivator to, to come and break it up. Then you could go use the tiller to shape your beds. And so that's what I'll do. I'll kind of like, I'll kind of fake it and I'll, I'll shape some beds. So let's just pretend that this ground, it might we might have had a cultivator come in here so it's not crazy like it's not it doesn't look too bad like I should be able to till through this and it'll be okay so keep in mind this is one way you can also do this with the rotary plow but if you do it with the rotary plow you need to use string lines I've broken up ground for years with a tiller and a tiller alone super simple um, and, and you can do it by eye but generally if you're gonna do it by eye you're doing it in smaller plots I wouldn't do a whole segment like this without putting lines because one small margin of error here is gonna compound over time. So in an urban context, this works really well. In small um, segments here and there, this works well. But big areas, you're gonna measure things out. But let me just demonstrate.
in. So if this was really rough ground, what probably would have happened is the first pass I made, I would have been bouncing around like this, right? If it was rocky, really compacted, whatever, I'd be bouncing around. What you can do if like, if it's really gnarly, like I'm talking an urban lot in San Diego, it's red mineral, it's almost like concrete. What you can do in a, in a small plot context is water the whole thing and then tarp it for two weeks. Uncover it, water it again, tarp it. Two weeks later, come back, then till. If there's a bit of moisture in the ground, it will till easier. So like that's like the worst case scenario, like hard compact, heavy mineral soil. That's what you might have to do. So if, if, if this was that situation, and there was just so much resistance on that first pass, but you can see that it's, it's penetrating. Like if it's not penetrating at all, get a machine, get like a big machine in there. Cause to do it with, the, with this was just, will just, it'll kill you and, and it's dangerous. Um, so, but let's pretend like we were able to get some penetration on it. First pass I, I did here. If I was only penetrating about like an inch or so, I'd turn around and just do the same one again. I might have done it two or three times and then I'm getting in, then go and then overlap again just like I did there. So I could, this could have been six or nine passes if it was really rough. So I've loosened it up a bit, I've overlapped, so now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to form some beds. And the tiller can do that. Um, in a small plot, you might, before you start shaping beds, you might grab a landscape rake and if it was like really uneven you might get a landscape break in here and level things out a bit this is like landscapers do this all the time you just kind of inch and dirt back this way you level it out then you come in at the tiller and now the tiller is going to shape the beds and so you know maybe actually what i'll do is i'll make i'll make two beds in this and then a walkway with the swath we will have enough space to do that and i can eyeball it so what i'll do is what I might, what I could do is if I had a little steak or just anything I can look at. Here, I'll just use this. Oh yeah, here we go. I just need a place to watch. So this is fine. I just one is fine. So what I'll do is I'll put it a bit further back so I have enough to turn around. Is I'll just come towards it. And on the first time I go, it won't be perfectly straight. But by the time I come back here and I turn around, I'll be able to see how not perfectly straight it is. <laughs> then, then I'll come back and correct it. On the second or third pass, it'll be, it'll be more or less perfect. And then once I have one bed that's good, the sequential beds from there, I can follow that. And I'm basically just going to use that as a point of reference. And you, you do that for blocks. Like you wouldn't do 50 beds that way. You would do maybe five or six, and then you'd be working within a perimeter. Like for me in, in an urban context, I always have things that I can follow. I'm either following a house or a fence or some kind of physical thing that's gonna, that's gonna direct me. So I'll just show you how I do this and just how I, how I just use my eye and my feet and by angling the tiller or the, the handlebars in different ways, I can accomplish a lot of things um, as I do it. So I'll make my walkways as I go.
walkways, you would measure those out. But for years, I've just done this by eye. I just come along with two, two feet of distance because that's enough for my walkways. I just walk it up and then I might have walked around to do this one and then go back and when I come back, I'm going to stay on the outside of my feet. Just like really simple eyeballing it. Again, you wouldn't do this in this context. This is more if you were doing something smaller. What you also could do too if you wanted to hill your beds and you didn't have a power harrow is you'd use a little square shovel and you'd come along and just shovel dirt onto the bed to make slightly raised beds. But these will naturally, these walkways will just work their work down over time and these beds will just look raised. 